good morning. I always like to do my recordings in the morning because it's my favorite time of the day. So I'm kind of stalling here. So see if some of my friends are going to come on here. Hopefully I'm talking loud enough. Oh, I'm trying to get this right. We're slanted. There we go. Uh, okay. So today I'm going to share about Kingdom Realities. I had one of my Facebook friends wanting to dispute me about the kingdom is not now. And so I know before God really gave this revelation to me, I didn't realize that the kingdom was now and I could walk in the kingdom. So I walked in a lot of failure in every area of my life. But one of the things, actually the most specialty thing that God um, ministers to me and I teach about is the kingdom of God. And I've written many books on that. And in the process of writing one called, uh, called the kingdom of God in the courts of heaven and how they interrelate with each other, how they work together. And they're really actually kind of the same thing in a sense. Uh, so, or part of each other, I should say. So, the kingdom of God, if you look at the kingdom of God, the word of God says in Matthew to pray this way. Jesus said to pray this way. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, a lot of times people don't really understand or see that scripture. But if you take a look back at Genesis, everything that God created, he created good. And he created it. And he gave us authority. Over. He, he, he created everything. He said it. And then he saw it. And then he created us in his image that we say things and we see them. And he said that everything that he created was good. Okay, so that was God's intention. God's intention for mankind to live on this earth was that they would live with everything good. Just like in Genesis. Everything he created, he created good. And he created it under our authority and our dominion. And created us in his likeness. And his prayer was, your kingdom come your, after the fall of man. His prayer was, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that is showing you that what is in heaven, there's no sickness, disease, poverty, lack. There's no rape. There's no uh, bugs that bite you and kill you or animals or s snakes that bite you and kill you in heaven. There are no plants in heaven that give you itchy rashes and that kill you in heaven. All those things are the fallen nature of the earth after Adam fell from the position that God intended and created him to be. Jesus came and bought back everything that Adam lost and taught us to pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So right there that is showing you that God's will showed you in Genesis when he created everything good and created everything for us, he even told us where the gold was saying that gold is good. He, he showed us he, he, the fruits and vegetables and what to eat and stuff. And so it was all, all the bugs, everything was good. And all of it was under our dominion. And so in the new covenant, he bought back everything that Satan stole from us by becoming the God of this world and wreaking havoc on the earth. Our position is supposed to be God of this world, ruler of this world, king of this world, under lords, under God of this earth. This earth was created for man. And so, when you pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, we're talking about the government, the enforcement of God's will on earth as it is in heaven, which is the, the, the kingdom is the government, the ruling authority on earth as it is in heaven. Well, just like there's the kingdom of Queen, of, of queen Diana, if she would have been queen, okay, she would have ruled over all that land because she was the queen. It was her kingdom. That meant she had authority, everything she owned, and she could sublet it out or give it out or whatever to whoever she wanted because she would have been the queen of that kingdom. And so the earth is God's kingdom and he chose to give it to man for a period to rule and have authority and dominion over. And the kingdom is the government of heaven. Well, the word of God says that that's his will for us to live on earth as we will in heaven but it all happens through the kingdom the kingdom has to rule the only way that we can live on earth as we will in heaven is by the kingdom rule so where is the kingdom the word of God says the kingdom of God is within you and the kingdom of God is in 
power. And if you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it talks about uh, Jesus healed the sick and said the kingdom has come upon you. So uh, when you heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, preach the good news to the poor that they don't have to be poor anymore. All those things are the kingdom and the kingdom enforced. And you enforce them by taking authority and dominion. In Ephesians 3, it talks about how now, today, we are to tell principalities, powers, mights, and dominions about the accomplished work of Jesus. We are to enforce it by speaking it, declaring it, decreeing it. Um, the, everything that Jesus did on the cross belongs to us, and we are supposed to enforce it using the kingdom that's within us, that's the power. The angels go to work and pull down the strongholds and pull down everything that is against us as we speak and declare the kingdom. But if we don't send out the angels to do it, um, if we don't speak the words, the angels are our ministering spirits that hearken to the voice of the word. The words that we speak that agree with the kingdom of God is what the angels go and do. Excuse me. So if you're not taking authority and dominion over what God gave you, then you're living in lack, sickness, disease, poverty, and fear. Uh, everything under the curse that naturally comes, that the whole earth naturally gravitates toward the curse. Let me tell you, one of the reasons that uh, I'm so confident of this, besides the fact that it is, I did what's called the rice experiment with a twist, and you can find that on YouTube. What I did was I took three, uh, I, I cooked rice, and then I took three containers, let the rice uh, evap dry, you know, so that it wasn't moist, and then covered it, let it dry for an hour, a couple hours, and then covered it, and then labeled it hate, love, ignore. And I took those th three things of rice, and once a day, I would take out the rice that said love, and I would speak words of love to it. You're a good rice. God loves you. You're a saved rice. You're going to have abundant life rice. You're a prosperous rice. And I spoke that to the rice, an inanimate object, just like Jesus did the tree. Okay. And then I took the other rice labeled hate, and I spoke hateful words for it. I said, you are on your way to hell. Nobody likes you. You are worthless. Uh, you better get saved. Uh, you know, you're sinning. You're a sinner, and stuff like that. And then the third rice I totally ignored. Well, in the rice experiment, I videotaped it, and I have it up on YouTube, and you can you can look at it, the pictures of the rice. The rice that I ignored turned all black. The rice that I spoke hateful things grew this big, black, fuzzy, what I call like a tumor, big, black, fuzzy mold thing. And the rice that I spoke loving to was white and, and just beautiful white, like it was the day I put it in there. And that is inanimate objects. And I spoke over them. And so I'm just showing you that your words are a matter of life and death. And when you speak what God says, that puts the angels to work. You can either say, angels, I command you to go do this. And everything I set my hands to do prospers. Or you can say, everything I set my hands to do does prosper. Thank you, Father, that it prospers. You know, but you want to... I learned that it works a lot better if you say, angels, I send you out to do this. I give them directions and commands. Okay, so that is the kingdom of God is taking authority and dominion. It's the government of God. And so that is how you are enforcing the government of God is by speaking the words of God, sending the hosts of angels out to do the gover governing of God. And it is for you now, uh, the word of God says that the kingdom of God is on Jesus' shoulder and and of its peace, it keeps expanding peace. Okay, so the kingdom of God is to bring peace and peace is no stress, no sickness, no disease, no poverty, no lack, no fear. All that stuff is on earth, should be on earth like it is in heaven and that is what the kingdom is to expand this and we expand it through, um, we are the shoulders of Jesus. We expand it through speaking the word, finding it in the word, and decreeing it and declaring it. And then when it's not happening, that's when you go to the courts of heaven and you apply it. And the courts of heaven, I'm putting together a book right now, The Kingdom of God and the Courts of Heaven and how it comes together. So I don't want to go over that part of it today. But the Kingdom of God, the Bible, whenever Jesus healed someone, raised them from the dead, anything he did, Everything he did, he referred to it as the kingdom of God, the hand of God, the finger of God. And we are the physical body on earth 
that Jesus operates through today. And if we are not walking in power, authority, and dominion, then Jesus is not walking in power, authority, and dominion. I have to pay my toll here. So, I don't want to speak when my face is in your face. <laughs> so let me pay this toll real quick and I will get back with you. This is my driving studio. Oh, I almost missed it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, and so the kingdom of God is the government of God and the government of God is in you because it's on Jesus' shoulder and we are the body of Christ. So we are the ones that are supposed to change the situation in the world. We are the ones um, that are supposed to be ruling on this world. When you see bad things uh, happening, tornadoes uh, coming, you are the one that's supposed to take authority using God's government, using the host of heaven to change the situation. Uh, we are not here just to be good people and go to church and do good things. We are put on this earth to have a relationship with God, to have communion with God, to have fellowship with God. And then Jesus came so that we would have, well, even before Jesus came, God said, let us have dominion on the earth. So we are here to have dominion on the earth. God loves it when we walk in authority and dominion because it's our faith showing us that we believe the word, that we believe him. And when you talk about the kingdom of God, you are talking about the power, the presence, the peace of God that is in you to release wherever you go, whatever you do. It's in power and the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And so many people forget about the righteousness part. We are new creation created as righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, we are not getting more righteous by our works and what we do. We do not earn our righteousness. We do not lose our righteousness. Jesus became sin, our sin, so that we could become his righteousness. When we are born again, we are born again righteous, okay? Righteousness is not a matter of our behavior. It is not a matter of our obedience. It's a matter of who we are in Christ Jesus. So the kingdom of God, you're not going to rule in the kingdom of God if you don't believe that you are the righteousness of God and you can't lose that righteousness. It is through faith in Jesus Christ you get saved and you become a new creature and you become righteous. It's not by your works or your behavior. Your works and your behavior become good once you understand who you are in Christ. It empowers you not to sin. Sin is what the devil uses to take you to the courts of heaven. Sin is what the devil uses against you to make you feel condemned so you feel as though you have no power or no right to um, experience heaven on earth or to go to heaven or to... Um, have the angels minister to you. Uh, sin separates you in your mind from everything that the blood of Jesus paid for you to have. But it doesn't separate you in God's mind because God will never leave you. The Holy Spirit is in you to make you successful. That's his goal. He is the operating wheel of the kingdom of God inside of you, speaking to you constantly, chatterbox like me, always talking. And, and so... The kingdom of God is authority and dominion. It's righteousness, peace, and joy. If something is not giving you peace and joy, then I would question whether it is the kingdom of God, and I would fight against it with my authority and dominion. And remember, you are the righteousness of God. That's what gives you the legal right to rule and reign on this earth, because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so... Um, Let's see, the righteousness, peace, joy. Uh, I think that's basically all I want to share with you. Um, if this is a blessing to you or your friends, sh share it on your social media sites. And your friends, you know, spread the word. Uh, I'll let you know when the book comes out. Um, it's kind of like halfway done. It's actually two books combined that I've already written, but I'm combining them in a way that we can understand it and put it to use. I never really had the revelation of how they work together before until now. And, and so that's what the book is about. If you're an author, here's my advertisement. If you're an author, I am a publishing coach, not necessarily a print a publisher, I sort of am, but I don't call myself that. 
what I do is for $300, I take your finished manuscript, I format it, get your ISBN number, create a professional cover, book cover for Creative Space and for Kindle, publish your book as a Kindle and a Creative Space, a print book, and open an author central account for you and do everything for you so that within 30 days, um, you will be a published author and uh, you will have a print book in your hand. You can buy it as little or as many as you want. Uh, from Creative Space. I have nothing to do with it. I don't take no uh, credit for any of it. I just do the legwork for you. Uh, so, my name is Robin Bremer. .net is my website. Check it out. Spread the word. We're getting ready to retire. So, my business ministry of publishing authors' books and promoting them and getting reviews for them um, will be our livelihood. So, if you like what I do or if you are one of my authors, you know, let people know. I get most of my business through Facebook, through word of mouth, through people who follow me and know me. That's the best way to get it. So, anyway, have a blessed day. I'm going to go to the skating rink and practice ice skating because I am on an ice hockey team with my husband and son and absolutely love it. And we play our third game. We won our first two games of the season, my second season. We're playing ice hockey. I know, feminine, pretty me, huh? Playing ice hockey. Cool. <laughs> not prideful. I just know who I am in God. <laughs> anyway, I love my ice hockey and I love playing with my husband and my son. Uh, we have a great time. There's no checking, but that doesn't mean that they don't check. I got knocked against the boards, pinned to the floor last game and um, so on. But it's lots of fun. I love it. Come out and check it out sometime if you're in Tulsa. Okay. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.